Welcome to this week's episode of the NFL's Way to Play Performance Series. And on this episode, we're highlighting the Seattle Seahawks superstar and sensational young wide receiver DK Metcalf. If we think back not too long ago, many people were saying that DK was just simply a great athlete. But as we look at him today, he's proven many people wrong. Yes, he's a great athlete, but he's a phenomenal football player as well. So we're gonna examine what makes DK Metcalf the superstar that he truly is. DK Metcalf, acceleration, deceleration, one of his key performance traits. What's the movement we have for that? So we're gonna start with a med ball and I'm gonna have Brian hold this med ball over his head, even come up on your tippy toes and we're gonna do a little progression here. Okay. First thing I want you to do is slam the ball down as fast as you can without letting it go and catch yourself in an athletic position. So what we're seeing there is he's using the weight of the med ball and the force of him throwing it down to work deceleration, work absorbing forces. So as we progress through that, I want you to do the same thing, but this time I want you to rebound out of it and throw the med ball to me on a line drive and catch yourself in a lunge. It'll make more sense okay. when you see it. Good. So normally we go for distance. We want a line drive. We don't want it thrown high. We, you, we're trying to work that same vector that a uh, receiver will be running a route on. Normally okay. we throw med balls overhead. Well, that'd right. be working verticals. We're trying to work on routes here, accelerating and decelerating in routes. What are some of the key benefits of this movement? Well, for starters, it's good. We're mixing velocity where we're decelerating something, to re decelerating something moving fast. So it doesn't like always a, have to be a weight. Wide receiver. Like a wide okay. receiver. So it doesn't always have to be something in the weight room. We get strong by many different means. And we're working on exploding in that horizontal force vector. Fancy way of saying the same vector you would run a route out of. And you don't necessarily get that with your traditional weight room movements like deadlift and squats. It seems like with the med ball, there's a bit of coordination that has to take place with the body. Is that accurate? Absolutely, so you're having to move and implement around your body, move your, be competent in space around, you know, a 10 pound An weight. Object, right. Yeah, so it's a great way to even get a little athletic movement going. Something like this visually looks a little bit complicated. So I'd imagine with young athletes, especially, there are some common mistakes that you've seen. What would be a few of the common mistakes? First thing, med ball's too heavy. With younger athletes, you could do the same movement with no med ball, and it's probably a great starting place. And you'll see, you know, when you start a good movement, when you have a good exercise, it's a circle. It starts good and ends good. So when you see, let's say you end in a bad lunge, well, maybe that med ball was too heavy, right? It's pulling them forward. So, okay, if we don't have a lighter med ball or a lighter weight, I've seen, you know, it's a little more dangerous, but maybe a five pound plate, as long as no one's around, right? right? If you don't have something lighter, you do no weight and you're still getting that benefit because you're throwing yourself down, you're decelerating and re-accelerating out, catching in that lunge. And then that brings me to the next point is, is that if it's too heavy and you're not rebounding out of there fast enough. So, Why is that important though? Because you want to be able to change direction fast. So okay. we're kind of implementing somewhat of a plyometric, somewhat of shock method without doing the crazy jumps. So if he were to decelerate and he's struggling to get out of there fast, it's not what we're looking for. We're not getting the benefit yeah, of the movement. That's not how Metcalf runs routes. <laughs> and that's, you know, it's just not athletic. So let's move on to part number two of the key performance traits for the great DK Metcalf. All right, Josh, we know that upper body strength is one of the other key performance traits that DK Metcalf possesses. Now, how do we build off of what Taylor Boggs gave us, but then add a little bit of the upper body component right, to it with right. it as well? Well, let's take some of the traits he was talking about, acceleration, deceleration. We'll add it to the lunge, and now we'll focus a little bit on the upper body by holding an overhead position okay. with the band. So Brian's gonna take the band, he's gonna hold a Y position over his head, and now he's gonna step out into the lunge, alternating each leg and making sure he's keeping his arms locked out at the top. Is there a progression to this? There is a progression. If you wanna make it more advanced, once you challenge this two-handed position, you hold it with one hand overhead and it's still the same concept. You're alternating the lunge, you're trying not to rotate at the upper body and you're keeping that hand locked out. Now, what are some of the key performance benefits that young athletes can expect to build? Well, the number one benefit is it's very similar to the position you're gonna be in when you're going up for a catch and a DB is trying to pull your arm down. When you're going up for a catch, you need to be able to hold your arm overhead and the band is simulating the same type of force that a DB would have 
trying to pull your arm forward. So the main okay. key right there. What about that physical component and his blocking or that physical component of him getting off the line of scrimmage? Is it gonna help that area as well? That's gonna help it as well too, because it's all about stability. It doesn't matter how hard you're punching someone, it matters how stable your shoulder is. And this type of strength is gonna be so much more specific. Rather than just doing a bunch of presses all the time, you need to be able to hold that shoulder in a stable position. What are some of the key mistakes that we will see with young athletes? The number one mistake that you'll see is athletes trying to arch their back to keep it overhead rather than holding their shoulder overhead. So if you notice here, Brian's in an inclined bench press position. That's not challenging the shoulder. That's really uh, targeting the lower back in a position we don't want to see on the field. Another common mistake is also athletes aren't going to lock it out. They're going to have a short arm, their elbow's going to be bent, and that's not challenging the shoulder as much as well. And then for the single arm variation, it, this is the more challenging one, but you'll often see athletes start to rotate as they go down and they need some core strength there. Perfect. So let's move on to performance trait number three for DK Metcalf. All right, CJ, that final performance trait for DK Metcalf is body control. What's the movement we have for that? But I want to combine a little bit of everything we've already talked about. Acceleration, deceleration, and the upper body strength as well. Well, we're going to stand the theme of the lunge. And the reason why we're going to stand the theme of the lunge, hey, it's going to put you in a position where you got to balance, where you okay. got to find stability. And we got to focus on tracking this ball. Cause we know as receivers, we got to track the ball. So all we're going to do, we're going to progress it. Let's just walk out into a lunge, just not too dynamic, because this is going to become really dynamic. Ready, go. As you can see, he's really driving his body to where the ball is, and he's tracking the ball with his head. He's not just moving his eyes. He's using his head as well. Now, as receivers, we got to move. Everything's not all static and we're not just moving slow. We got to be kind of moving a little bit, but we still got to maneuver our body. Good. Very good. Driving his ball, driving his body under the ball, moving his head, throw it over his shoulder. Oh, there oh, you go. Good. There you go. That's good. That's so what good. are the key performance benefits that young athletes can expect with this movement? Well, I think that, you know, with receivers, I think, you know, body control, there's not a lot of training you see where we're dealing with where the quarterback releases the ball before he catches the ball. In between there, we just think, hey, if you're a good athlete, you just got to figure, figure it, out. it out. I think this really brings that component of body control, stability, while putting your body on one angle and your head's kind of going everywhere. And it's very hard to kind of move your body underneath the ball. But I'm also seeing some of the acceleration and deceleration that Taylor talked about as well. And obviously upper body strength. Yes, and that's why we progressed it from going really slow to fast. That's where you get that deceleration. But you're seeing him have to decel and kind of get some of that eccentric kind of strength and catching the ball and getting into a lunge and we're also getting that body control. As if you're coming out of a route. Exactly. Now, what are some of the mistakes? Because there's a lot going on here. So with coaches and with young athletes, what are some of the mistakes that we see I or think would the, see? I think the first thing, I mean, just like when Taylor was using the med ball, maybe it's too heavy. Maybe just use a basketball or maybe just use a football right here. Okay. You know, just use that um, and progress to a med ball and the med ball is going to add just kind of some more core stability when you catch it. I think number two, really focus on tracking the ball with your head. You know, don't cheat it, don't cheat the lunge, you kind of keep your head stationary and just try to use your eyes. No, track it with your head, move it with it, because that's what you really got to do on the field. Because when you're getting into that slam route, you got to look back, right? And your body's on a different angle, you got to figure out how to get that body control. Anything with posture? Posture, she yes. Should be mindful of don't, Yeah, don't overreach for the ball. So when I throw the ball, don't overreach. Really drive yourself into the lunge underneath it. Sometimes you'll see players just reach out. And as you can see, he lost his upper back kind of posture. Drive your body underneath it, lower those hips, lower your center mass, and catch it in a good, stable position because you got to always remember, contact's coming. CJ, this is a great way to blend everything that Taylor and Josh talked about into a simple yet functional way to become a better football player. It goes without saying, DK Metcalf is a special human being, but he has worked and willed himself into becoming a phenomenal football player. Many people didn't believe that this was possible, and many people will not believe in your dreams and goals either, but you gotta work and will yourself to becoming the player you want to be. So what are we doing? Let's get out here and play some football.